start our uh, panel discussion, uh, update security training strategies for employees during one hour, um, on-site training, online training, in-classroom training, custom hackathons, upskilling and reskilling boot camps, cybersecurity awareness campaigns, mentorship, or onboard new hires. Those are some of the new generation program designed to help users employees and professionals to understand the role they play in helping to combat information security breaches or participated actively to reduce vulnerabilities. Change management strategy, technology subjects, instructors have to be considered in the individual paths that a prospective cybersecurity professional can choose from to prepare for them for the cyber workforce. We will try to understand together the new education and training with our panel, some of the reflections uh, today's, uh, in our today's area for debate. I would like to welcome for that our distinguished panelists, Mr. Gong Sok Lee, Cybersecurity Innovator in Korea, nice to see you, Mr. Yohan Mitulescu, Vice President of Information Technology in Korea also, and Dr. Salim Ahmed, uh, techno uh, that is Technology Research fellow, fellow in Qatar. Thank you uh, for all of you to join me for this session. Uh, let's start immediately with one question for Mr. Gang Sokli. So you are the director of the R&D Center at the COSIAS Korea. You have a great experience on which kind of measures are raised for employees information security awareness. The importance of the information security compliance in companies is growing. For example, if personal information protection is violated, the violating company as well as individual employees may be punished. However, it's not easy for employees to understand compliance. Is there any effective way according to you nowadays? I think we have a new problem. Oh, one second. Hey. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Sorry, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, please. Yeah. Nice to meet all of you and appreciate you having me here today. I work for cybersecurity company as an R&D center director. As you introduced me shortly, I work for the public sector and the private sector. Also have information awareness training experiences, not only in domestic, but also overseas. You know, according to with the question about effective way to understand the security compliance, I would like to share with you my humble opinion. From now on, I would like to talk in Korean to explain clearly. 직원들이 조직에서 준수해야 할 정보보호 관련 컨퍼런스는 Yeah, I can hear you well. Can I continue? <laughs> Sorry. 단순히 정보보호 정책만을 이야기하지는 않습니다. 이게는 정보보호 관련 법률하고 개인 정보보호에 관한 법률이고 공판은 영역에 따라요. 전자상거래 소비자 보호법, 추정정보보호법 등 적용받는 법률도 다릅니다. 그러다 보니 주변들이 느끼는 정보보호 컴플라이언스는 무척이나 따다롭게 받아들이는 것 같습니다. 법률적인 부분에 있어서 관련 전문가가 아니다 보니 정보보호 컴플라이언스 위반 시에 받게 되는 범칙금이나 처벌 등에 대한 이해 부분으로 인해서 아전히 이런 것들을 우려하고 있는 것이 현실인 것 같아요. 그렇다 하더라도 주기적인 정보 관련 컴플라이언스 교육을 통해서 직원들의 정보 분식을 유도해야 할 필요가 있습니다. 다만 직원들에게 좀더 알기 쉽게 다가가느냐에 대한 문제인 것 같네요. 효과적으로 컴플라이언스를 이해하기 위해서는 첫 번째로 실제 직장에서 발생하는 여러 가지 정보 보호 위반 사항에 대해 예제 중심으로 풀어서 설명할 필요가 있지 않을까 생각합니다. 직접적으로 담당자가 어떤 행위를 했는지 어떤 처벌과 범칙의 범칙금이 부여되는지를 나한테 전달한다면 어려운 법률적인 것을 전부 알지 못하더라도 충분히 이해할 수 있을 것 같습니다. 
두 번째는 뭐 많은 정보는 오히려 혼란을 발전시킬 수 있습니다. 따라서 모든 법에 대해 설명보다는 직접적으로 지금에 따라 공사 분위기에 관련된 부분을 이해시키도록 하는 것이 중요합니다. CISO, CPO 이런 영역을 또 따로 있고 고객 정보나 개인 정보를 다루는 직원, 비밀 정보를 다루는 직원에 따라 준수해야 할 부분만 명확히 하고 나머지 직원들에 대해서는 상식 수준에서 교육을 진행하는 것이 바람직합니다. 모든 법적인 내용을 설명하게 되면 짓게 될 부분과 그렇지 않은 부분은 보호하게 됩니다. 따라서 짓게 될 상황에 대해 강조하고 이해를 분장할 필요가 있습니다. 세 번째는 언제든지 법률적인 부분에 대해서 궁금한 것이 있으면 물어볼 수 있는 채널을 구축하는 것입니다. 사내 변호사를 고용하거나 전화, 이메일을 통해서 수지로 법률 상담을 받을 수 있는 전문가 서비스를 볼수 있습니다. 이런 법률적인 서비스 내용을 사내 게시판을 이용해서 서로 공유하고 공감대를 갖는 것도 좋은 방법입니다. 네 번째는 사내 IT 시스템을 이용해서 정보법 컴플라이언스에 대해 중요 충분히 나갈 수 있는 어, 허경을 제공하고 있습니다. 예를 들면 비슨 정보법 컴플라이언스 누구나 주시장을 스크린 세이버나 배경 화면 등으로 제작해서 배포하는 것입니다. 혹은 내 포털을 이용하는 팝업장을 이용할 수도 있습니다. 주기적으로 내용을 업데이트하고 알기 쉽게 참여하는 것과 중요한 포인트입니다. 마지막으로 정보보호 컴플라이언스에 대해 중요하지 않은 회사의 전반적인 분위기입니다. 직원들에게만 정보보호 컴플라이언스 교육을 요구하고 준수하도록 요구하면 충분한 동기부여 되지 못했습니다. 정보보호 컴플라이언스 준수의 책임성과 오너십은 회사의 임원 분들에게 더 크습니다. 따라서 임원분들은 직원분들이 정보보호 컴플라이언스를 더욱 더잘 이해하고 준수할 수 있도록 고민하고 다양한 이벤트와 서비스를 준비해야 할 것입니다. 이상입니다. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lee, for this explanation. Uh, my second question will be for uh, Mr. Yohan Mitulescu. You are working for an international company that has a very big branch in Korea. How do you make sure that your risks are covered? Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, thank you for the question. I think this is a, actually a very good question. And uh, um, I, I'm, I'm, I will, I'm, I'm coming from the side of the you know the the company that uh, it, it fully uh, uses the uh, information uh, that uh, my uh, my distinct colleague just uh, talked about it so from my point of view is uh, as a, as a uh, you know cyber security uh, operator kind of call it that way uh, for, for my company i have to make sure that i look at the entire environment um, uh, as a framework Right. I want to make sure that uh, uh, this frame frameworks uh, serves the company uh, its best needs. So for that, uh, I think I have to we have to look at the cybersecurity uh, as a whole, not just protecting equipment or you know starting just with the user training awareness or behavior. So it's it's the whole package that uh, you look at it. So. Um, uh, examples I would be we have to you know enhance uh, physical security as well not not just uh, uh, user training you have to help uh, people that way uh, we have to have proper surveillance uh, uh, you know, uh, implemented especially in the uh, 
uh, dedicated IT rooms and their locations and think like example would be the, the last thing you want to have, for example, is uh, in, in your, uh, on, on the door of your data center to have a, a note saying this is the data center. <laughs> so, um, for example, <laughs> it, it happens, I've seen it, so. Uh, it's, uh, um, then uh, additional to that, uh, the, the whole package, I, I, I think uh, uh, it's extremely important to look at uh, outsourcing your, your uh, security surveillance monitoring function uh, to uh, you know, a well-renowned uh, cybersecurity company that will monitor the health uh, of the organization on a 24-7, 365 basis. Um, because uh, um, I found it due to experience, there is no way you can have your own team so the same level to provide the same level of, uh, of uh, uh, service as it would be a specialized company. So uh, uh, those would be uh, the main the main components. So uh, additional in the end would be uh, extremely important. I, I think to 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 the, uh, all this training and uh, all this uh, preparation that you put in plan to protect yourself is to have. Uh, uh, a proper, uh, you know, uh, uh, a proper, um, what we call action security breach response action plan. So uh, you can, uh, I mean, that, that, that is one of the things that everybody should have and be ready to, to use it and, you know, to, to exercise it uh, in, uh, you know, in a, in a, uh, I would say, like maybe quarterly basis and just to, to, to plan for it. Um, then um, we have to organize like the regular cyber security audits and uh, various pen tests and uh, especially phishing campaigns. And, uh, and this is what uh, we plan. And so uh, uh, this way we, we, we know where you will stand. Uh, we, have, uh, we have some baselines of, uh, uh, of, of your uh, cyber security health at specific moments in time. Um, and uh, these things are extremely uh, important to our line of work. Uh, because uh, when I was talking, for example, for the framework, um, for me, it's not just the new threats, it's also the old threats that uh, we have to have to take in consideration. And uh, looking up, up, around uh, um, you know, uh, throughout the cybersecurity uh, timeline history, can I call it? Uh, I'm a, I'm, I, I identify like like uh, five generational threats. Everything started with uh, viruses, right? and then we moved into network attacks, and then we got uh, a, a bit more sophisticated with, with uh, attacks on applications, like like uh, people uh, uh, searching and identifying applications uh, vulnerabilities, and they would exploit those things. So. That would be that was like the, the third type of attack which we would have used um, uh, inclusion prevention systems to, to, to take care of those. Uh, and then it became uh, became more complicated the, the, the type of attack more and more intelligence like uh, they would do, they would be in forms of payloads, targeted attacks, sandboxes. Uh, so this is when you have to uh, when you started to introduce uh, advanced persistent threat systems uh, with uh, signature base, dynamic analysis, uh, things that will stay on top of the firewalls. And the latest ones, uh, based on the new technologies, it's uh, like the large uh, uh, multi-scale vector mega attacks. Uh, these are in general, um, uh, you know, um, managed by, uh, by, uh, by AIs. Uh, so for that, we have to look at uh, 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 artificial intelligence uh, uh, systems that would proactively uh, secure your 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 your, cyber, your, your cyberspace. Uh, uh, in my opinion, these are actually the the five areas uh, you have to look uh, in order to make sure your networks are, are, are secure. But uh, additional to that. When we're talking about framework, yes, it all starts with uh, with uh, user training and user awareness. Yeah. 
and then you, you should uh, end up with uh, with uh, uh, what's your prevention plan and how do how how well are you trained to put it in action? Thank you for this insight. So that uh, can uh, be interesting for our audience because we know where companies like yours invest in cybersecurity. So what kind of uh, skills do we need? For our audience to focus on if they want to work in outsourcing company for your for for example in, in this case uh, we will not directly discuss with mr with dr salim because we will have a 20 minutes dedicated to have a good explanation about the fundamentals and insecurity and how they evolve with the pandemic so i will turn to uh, mr gantok lee with a second question about your opinion for the security policy and procedure compliance Um, just to, to be. Okay, sorry. We have um, so organization prepare security policies, procedures, and they invest a lot in certification like ISO 27001 and ISMS. It's important to prepare and design the security policies and procedures to sentence the organization's security posture. However, it's also important to follow them consistently. What do you think is important for employees to comply with these organization security policies and procedures, uh, Mr. Gonsotti? Yeah, um, <clears throat> 직원들에게 보안 정책과 절차를 준수하도록 하는 다양한 방법이 있을 거예요. 예를 들면 APT 이메일 공격 어, 대응 훈련이나 기도수 공격 모의 훈련 등을 통해서 보안 절차에 잘 따르는 등이 가능하고 당분간 최측으로 적절한 동기 부여를 하는 저는 좀더 다른 방식으로 이 질문에 접근하도록 하겠습니다. 기업은 사회적이든 타이적이든 조직의 정보 보호 체계를 구축하고 잘 이해하고 있다는 정도로 알릴 수 있는 철철 이름의 예전의 스피 등의 정보 보호 관련 인증서를 갖고 있습니다. 한국은 2000년대 초에 정보보 관리 체계 인증이라는 제도를 도입해서 통신 사업자들로 하여금 이 정보보 체계를 구축하고 준수할 것을 요구한 바 있습니다. 정보보에 대한 기업의 인식이 부족했던 제도 도입 초기에는 많은 반대에 부딪히게 되었습니다. 이후 여러 번의 사이버 공격과 시민 사고가 발생하면서 기업은 이런 제도의 필요성을 느끼게 되었다. 지금은 자연스럽게 업 스스로가 ISMSP 인증서를 요청하고 있는 상황이긴 합니다. ISMSP 인증서를 물량 기업은 개인정보 보호를 포함해서 정보보호 체계가 잘 구축되어 있고 잘 준수할 것이라는 인식을 갖게 합니다. 하지만 연밀히 살펴보면 반드시 그렇지만은 않죠. 이러한 인증서를 획득하는 것은 회사 내부의 자발적인 그리고 특수적인 상황에서 이루어지는 것이 아니라 사업상 또는 대외 이미지상 또는 한 경우에 문제가 발생할 수 있습니다. 예를 들어 기사에서 증언하고 있는 ISMSP 인증서를 획득하는 과정을 생각하면 기업은 ISMSP 인증서를 받기 위한 절차를 마련합니다. 즉, ISMSP 인증 요건을 파악하고 이에 따라 102개의 보안 통제 항목을 준수하기 위해 회사의 모든 정책과 절차를 수정하고 몇 개월 동안 이를 준수했다는 정책 자료를 포함해서 인증서를 획득하게 됩니다. ISMSP 인증서가 급한 회사는 웹의 정보보호 컨설팅 전문 업체에 의뢰해서 보안 컨설팅을 받기도 합니다. 내부의 정보보호 담당자가 충분히 이러한 제도적인 부분을 이해하고 있지 않은 경우에는 좀더 시간이 걸릴 수 있습니다. 회사는 이러한 전반적인 내부의 준비 상황보다는 인증서에 급하기 때문에 모든 부분을 컨설팅 전문 업체에 의뢰하게 됩니다. 컨설팅 전문 업체는 짧은 기간 내에 일정을 마무리하기 위해서 기존에 잘 만들어진 정책과 조차를 고객 기업에 적용합니다. 그리고 몇 달간 새로 설계된 보안 정책과 보안 절차를 
직원들에게 준수하도록 하여 이런 모든 정적 자료를 만들고 ISMS 신청을 하게 됩니다. ISMS 인증은 약 일주일간의 내부 전문가가 심사를 거쳐 모든 조건이 만족되었다고 판단되면 인증서를 발급합니다. 이런 과정에서 나타날 수 있는 문제점 어떤 것이 있을까요? 아, 저와 같은 연배에 계신 분들이라면 사람은 자축통행, 자동차는 우축통행이라는 규칙으로 교육을 받고 자라왔을 니다 지금은 어떻습니까? 순서가 바뀌었죠? 어느 한 날의 상황이 바뀌었습니다. 사람은 우축통행이고 자동차는 좌축통행입니다. 저는 지금도 산책하다 보면 종종 반대편에서 좌측 통행을 하시는 어르신과 마주칠 때가 있습니다. 이러한 경우 여러분은 어떻게 우측 통행을 고집하시나요? 아니면 살짝 공간을 내주시나요? 우리는 예절상 젊은 사람을 피해한다고 생각하여 피하게 될 것입니다. 하지만 정부부에는 예절이 없죠. 아이스 드신 분들을 겸하는 고자는 일본 아이스. 이분들은 상대적으로 젊은 분들에 비해 기존에 오랫동안 몸에 익힌 행동 패턴을 한 날에 바꾸는 것이 쉽지 않기 때문입니다. 이렇게 일상이 작은 부분마저 변하게 되는데 조직의 보완을 위해 정책과 절차를 짧은 기간에 변경하고 직원들에게 준수하라고 하면 어떻게 될까요? 직원들은 바로 자신의 행동 패턴을 보고 잘 따라와 줄까요? 조직은 보안 정책과 절차를 만드는데 직원들의 행동 원식인 기업 문화를 얼마나 반영하고 있을까요? 제가 도미니카 공화국의 한 기업 회사에 방문한 적이 있었습니다. 전력회사는 직원들에게 노트북을 나눠주고 있었고 직원들은 퇴근 시에 노트북을 집으로 가져와서 가족들과 영화를 본다고 하였습니다. 불법 영화를 다운받는 과정에서 바이러스가 감염되고 다시 회사에 가져와 회사 시스템에도 영향을 준다고 하였습니다. 이 전력 회사의 보안 정책을 세울 때 여러분이시라면 어떻게 하시겠습니까? 회사 자산의 노트북이 내부의 반출을 전면 금지하고 안전하지 않은 사이트는 접속하면 안 된다고 설계하는 것이 맞겠죠. 주거들은 오랫동안 노트북은 산의 복지이고 인프라가 부족한 나라에서 가족들과 지어 노트북으로 영화를 보는 것은 당연한 것이라고 인식하고 있었습니다. 어느 한 날에 노트북을 제대로 가져가면 안 되는 거라면 어떤 반발이 있을까요? 이것이 적합한 보안 문제에 해당이 될까요? 저는 보안 정책과 보안 절차를 만들 때 직원들의 행동과 습득을 아닌가요? 직원들이 자연스럽게 준수할 수 있도록 설계를 하는 것이 중요하다고 생각합니다. 무조건 만들었으니 집이라는 것은 부작용이 소환되며 결국 정보보호 위반으로 인해 기업에 피해를 끼치게 될 것입니다. 물론 ISMSP 인증서를 발급하는 인증기관이나 인책기관도 조직의 우유 문화를 반영한 보안 통제를 적용할 때 이를 수용하는 인통성이 이상입니다. 감사합니다. Thank you for this uh, interesting uh, uh, explanation about uh, cultural, uh, cultural uh, corporate uh, impact on policies. How the corporate uh, culture must be also involved to have an impact on the change behavior. Uh, let's move to the next question to uh, Mr. Yuan Mitulescu. Mr. Mitulescu, um, what are so you are working in entertainment uh, field, and there are some specific constraints. Or what are the aspects of cybersecurity in such environment for the people interested uh, by this? I, uh, yeah, uh, that's another good question. Is uh, because in, in in my area of uh, uh, integrated resort resorts, which includes uh, some some specific uh, uh, um, business units, um, 
these are subject to a more restrictive regulation a set of regulations when it comes to customer data protection especially uh, this is where we have to be extremely careful about it and uh, we need to make sure that uh, you know all guest data is protected um, and uh, guest data is not always i mean it has a various degrees of uh, of uh, uh, you know uh, how, how, how more protected some of that could be than the others, like usernames and stuff like that, versus credit cards, for example. So it's a different level. You have to uh, compartmentalize over there. Uh, then um, uh, we have to make sure that uh, once you have that data, uh, it's uh, it's also properly handled. And uh, we have for that uh, some standards. In Korea, there is KIPA that uh, we have to uh, uh, you know, uh, use it as, as our framework. And uh, worldwide, it, I mean, the most uh, used uh, these days, it's because it's, it's a, a comprehensive, it's the European GDPR. So these are the two we, uh, we, uh, we based our uh, work around it to, 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 to create all the edits and make sure that uh, uh, the data is it's, uh, properly uh, maintained, handled, and protected. Uh, and then additional to that, you have to also make sure your employees' data is it's, uh, it's, uh, it's subject to, to the same level of protection. Um, and uh, the, third, but the, the third area that we have to look at, uh, sorry, the fourth one is, is to make sure that the entire company digital environment it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's being, uh, uh, you know, uh, protected against uh, attacks, attacks that uh, can can and will create uh, data damage. Uh, so uh, uh, it all starts basically with making sure that we, we have uh, change management strategies with clear policies and procedures that are actually followed by the employees. To, to be followed by the employees, yes, we have to run uh, a, a large number, uh, no, not a, a, a specific number of trainings uh, to, uh, for everybody. And uh, sometimes these things have to be repetitive. Uh, but uh, another point I want to add is you, we can do a lot of training and talk about it, but I think what, what uh, is uh, very helpful for uh, the success of these uh, training programs is to put training into practice. And by that, I mean, you have to run phishing campaigns and see how people, uh, uh, they get used to them to, to, to react in, in a proper way to, to, to uh, help and make sure that they, they're aware of those things. We have to run additional, you know, cybersecurity audit campaigns to see, okay, this, this policy is in place, but is it actually followed? And, uh, and then start repeating the process. And... Uh, the third one, which is uh, extremely important as well, and I mentioned it before, is to put in action the uh, uh, security breach response action plan. Uh, I cannot stress enough how important that is because if you if you get uh, attacked, you have to uh, to know exactly how to react within a very short amount of time. You don't have time then to start to figure out how you're going to. React to, to this, uh, and um, all of these things. They uh, they actually we, we have to uh, look at a, a budget. How much of this cost? So we have to be uh, careful in uh, which area uh, we, we invest and make sense, and where where it doesn't really make sense to to make investments. Uh, but in in uh, like like a general rule we have to look at as i said at the, at the balance uh, cyber security defense part and that will protect you against all five generation of attacks and invest also in, in, in a proper monitoring function Next thank you uh, mr mitulescu one one key word i heard in in your in your explanation was the awareness training aspect. And I will turn this time to you, Mr. Lee, uh, to know, to clarify the importance of security technology to secure IT systems. When companies purchase uh, the security products of systems, they expect these systems to protect against all cyber attacks and all cyber threats. These false expectations of businesses have improved a lot compared to the past. 
But there are still many. For example, the businesses that know they need to deploy anti-ransomware products to defend against anti-ransomware attacks, which have been a hot topic lately. But in order to effectively respond to these attacks, is it, it is important not only to improve skills, but also to raise the security awareness of employees. What are the security awareness requirements that security personnel must respond to these cyber attacks, Mr. Lee? Uh,基本本質部門的一方面,我們所有的情報和認識水準都是有的。我們所有的情報和認識水準都是有的。我們所有的情報和認識水準都是有的。我們所有的情報和認識水準都是有的。我們所有的情報和認識水準都是有的。
서비스를 시작하기 전에는 이런 모든 조건이 필요합니다. 새로운 IT 업무 환경으로 변화를 시작할 때도 가장 보수적으로 접근하는 것이 이런 조직이 아닙니다. 보안 전문가는 새로운 서비스를 시작하거나 새로운 IT 업무 환경으로 전환할 때 컴플라이언스 기업을 점검하고 보안 작품을 점검하는 활동 등을 하게 됩니다. 이러한 조건이 맞춰지지 않으면 보안 기업은 진행이 불가하다고 판단할 것입니다. 보안의 완벽을 기하는 것은 맞습니다. 하지만 보안을 완벽한 보안을 고집하다 보면 적절한 서비스 출시 일정을 놓치게 되고 서비스 경쟁에서 비춰질 수 있습니다. 이는 결국 회사의 경제 활동을 위축시킬 수도 있습니다. 저는 보안 대책을 이야기할 때 완벽한 보안 대책이 아니라 적절한 보안 대책을 보안 대책으로 말합니다. 완벽한 보안은 추구할 수는 있지만 완벽할 수는 없습니다. 따라서 보안 당자는 기업의 서비스가 적시에 출시될 수 있도록 인품성을 발휘할 필요가 있습니다. 예를 들어 운영하기에 따라 적절한 보안 대책을 세우고 서비스를 운영하면서 동시에 보안하는 방식으로 선언할 수 있습니다. 적절한 보안 대책은 서비스 환경과 기술 수준 등에 따라서 달라지는 모습이기 때문에 여기서 한마디로 정의하는 것은 매우 어렵습니다. 이는 그 조직의 보안 담당자의 전문적인 판단이 필요한 사안이라고 생각합니다. 보안 담당자의 유연한 사고를 통해 보안 조직이 단순히 태클을 거는 조직이 아니라 현실적인 대안과 해결책을 제시하는 함께하는 조직이라는 이 조직의 대표할 필요가 있습니다. 그렇죠? 감사합니다, Mr. g o n g s o k l i about uh, your recommendations how to apply the security, uh, cyber security awareness training in companies uh, with the management recommendations. Um, I think we have uh, just the time for a last question for Mr. y o a n m i t o l e s k u before uh, listening to the very interesting uh, lecture from the Dr. Salim uh, Ahmed. Uh, the question is, uh, comes from many, many attendees. Uh, they always ask, uh, is AI dangerous or can, in terms of replacing some human in cybersecurity, what is your stand, uh, Mr. m i t o l e s k u regarding to the use of AI in cybersecurity? Hi. Uh, yeah. Thank. Thank you for the question. It's, it's one of the uh, new things that uh, uh, keeps us awake. <laughs> uh, but uh, basically, uh, going back to the model I described, the fifth uh, generation uh, uh, attack model that happened these days, uh, it, it, it can be successfully, uh, you know, defended uh, by. Uh, By employment, by uh, employment of another uh, AI defensive uh, system, uh, it's it's actually kind of the, the most efficient way. Uh, it will require a more um, time to you know to to wait for the system uh, for your your AI device uh, system to, to learn uh, and to be uh, um, uh, you know uh, set up properly. Uh, because otherwise you receive a lot of false positives, and this is the biggest issue that uh, uh, you know uh, user, uh, I mean security personnel uh, kept saying about it. But uh, if you allow, as I said, enough time and you pay more attention to the AI learning phase and adjust it accordingly, then uh, the benefits uh, by far outstrip any, any any other result because. Uh, the uh, AI response time to identify threats it's, it's incomparable faster than than what uh, human intervention can 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 be and we're talking about uh, phases like uh, when you actually acknowledge the fact that there is an attack uh, what is what is the uh, decision making process what is the investigation how you run all those things what's how you do how fast you start doing the intervention phase And uh, uh, everything is based on a decision, automated decision process versus trying to, to figure out what's happening. So uh, there is a lot of studies that show how, how much uh, faster you can react by using uh, the uh, AI defense. 
in uh, into this uh, uh, new world of uh, you know of five generations of hacks. Um, yeah, and um, as an example, I can give you an example. Of, uh, a few few years back, uh, there was a, <laughs> there was a, one of the casinos in the uh, uh, U.S. was actually attacked by uh, hackers who got uh, into a fish tank device and they penetrated penetrated it and then they started to move around the network from there and uh, they they managed to to get uh, very deep and got all about about. 10 gigabytes of data out of uh, uh, that place. Uh, imagine just by uh, finding a, uh, a fish tank that it's, uh, it was just an IoT. <laughs> uh, what's the lesson here? I mean, if we'd have a, a device that uh, would have done the proper profiling in advance, then uh, you would have known that uh, right away that there's a device that shouldn't be with access to the internet and uh, he cannot uh, access anything else but specific uh, log page, specific servers, and specific ports, and uh, nothing else. So this is why AI profiling is uh, it's, it's, it's so important uh, because it becomes a proactive security system uh, instead of reactive, as uh, everything else is at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Mitulescu. Uh, AI mm -hmm. to detect a false positive. AI to uh, more, more active in, in uh, is the approach. That's a very, uh, very interesting uh, trends that we'll, uh, we will see in the future. I would like to turn now to the Dr. Salim. Dr. Salim, we would like to, you are a technology researcher, an educator also in Qatar. And after the pandemic, we had a little discussion to, together and you told me that there are some changes that need to be known from the, on the security training strategies. So can you, so tell us a bit more about the changes. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Julian, Mr. Ali, and Mr. Mitusulasko for inviting me here. Uh, Mr. Julian, if you don't mind, should I start my presentation or should I answer your question first? I think um, we have uh, 20 minutes. I think it could be good to answer at the same time. We can see your... Uh, some key yeah. aspect of your presentation. Okay, so uh, can you uh, give me uh, sharing my screen? I can share. Yeah, here it is. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. So yes, uh, can you see it, please? Yeah, just to put the full screen. Yes. So, <clears throat> okay. Mm. I will try, I try to answer your question. Uh, uh, let me finish my this uh, little presentation for my audience. I mean, that is, I mean, I think very important. From the key point, I would like to start with the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful. And uh, since this is my field about training, as I have been in associate professors teaching, I mean, uh, to my university students, there is very uh, one very famous saying in English language. You can say prevention is better than cure. Okay, and all my presentation about two days concern about it. I'm just trying to put some light, you know, uh, uh, on this. And which should I mean? What is what is my basic I mean target? We should I mean avoid that ignored element of the cyber security that is basically preventable, and it is just by doing a practicing. What is that weakest element uh, in terms of cyber literacy? So let, let me talk about it. As you have already uh, shared with me, Mr. Julian, that in the current time of information technology, new generation, they have a lot of programs, a lot of options for going through. You know, some of those you mentioned on site training, online training, I mean, training camps, hackathons, and I mean, uh, reskilling boot camps, I mean. I don't have any, I mean, deny to those training. I cannot neglect, I mean, and, and also I understand the importance of those program. But in my opinion, uh, before all this, there is one very important factor that we should, uh, that I think we are ignoring, or you can say we are missing. So needs for this attention is, uh, in my opinion, we should start realizing it. And that is the weakest point of, I mean, cybersecurity. A 
and what is that element, uh, how we can improve it, uh, and how we can make it stronger to face any cyber threats before going towards any type of new generation, I mean, programs. First, uh, let me uh, let us work on the weakest element of the security. So, I mean, uh, by keeping your question in mind, let me give you the situation, the current situation. As you know, in 2021, I mean, there are more technological advances came into existence. I mean, at the same time, cybersecurity issues, I mean, they, they go high increase. I mean, posing, you know, increasing threats to businesses. Then COVID-19 uh, pandemic was there. Uh, due to that, I mean, people start working remotely. Market, uh, due to this COVID-19, uh, people lost their jobs. The financial recession came in. Companies, you know, the ability to maintain, uh, financial ability to maintain and keeping, you know, cyber security practices affected. So what were the results? Uh, the results, uh, eventually, I mean, the organization data remains, I mean, unprotected making them vulnerable for others, for cyber attacks and data breaches. So this was the time, a real time, I would call it, where I mean, cybersecurity awareness training came into existence. I mean, people start realizing it, that uh, what is the importance of awareness and what should be our mindset, which direction we start uh, thinking and what are the solutions. So here we comes, towards security. security. So uh, let me give you, since uh, you have already told me, I mean, uh, the number of slides, I mean, uh, I just want, uh, yeah, I mean, trying to present this in limited time. So I would like to keep my face a little bit quicker. So cyber cybersecurity, what is exactly, I mean, so let me give you idea Cybersecurity is nothing just a collection of tools, policies, security concepts, safeguards, guidelines, risk management and approaches, actions, trainings, best practices, assurance and technologies. And by the way, these are not limited. There may be many more. This, by being as a CEO of the company, you should think of what could be benefit for you. By the way, these are the collection of tools or practices that can be used to protect your cyber environment and organizational and user assets. So this is this was a, in my view, this is the best definition for the cyber security. And before I move forward, what is basically CIA thrive? We are talking about on piece of paper, but 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 even I have asked many CEOs or some companies here and instead of the Qatar. They don't know what, what is this about it. Okay, by name they know about this is confidentiality, integrity and availability, but in practically knowledge, they, they are nil, they don't know about it. On top of it, you know, some, some companies, they have added more components like authentication, authorization, non repudiations okay, these are acceptable, but main concern should be the basic objective or components of security, it remains constant. So, let me highlight to, again quickly. I uh, don't want to take much of time here. So in terms of confidentiality, it is nothing just protecting information from unauthorized access and uh, disclosure. Example in front of you is criminal steals, customer username, password, or credit card information. Uh, by moving to the next one, that is integrity. It is nothing just about protecting information from unauthorized modifications. An example, if someone alters payroll information or proposed product design, what happened? Think about it. And in terms of availability, preventing disruption in how information is assessed. Yes, availability. For example, think of if, if your customers are unable to access your online services or your client, they don't get on, uh, on time your product or services. Uh, what, what will happen towards your reputation of your, your company? Another issue. So. Key point is after knowing at this, we should try to understand the balance. We should try to understand the relationship between. If we are focusing on one thing, the other things we are uh, uh, we are trying to lose from our head. So, for example, an example: if you disconnect a computer from internet, uh, if you are concerned with to increase confidentiality, 
other hand side, your availability suffers and your integrity also suffers due to loss of updates. So think of this. Try to understand we as a senior people, we as a CEOs or leading position in our organizations, we should understand what is the relationship between them. Let me give you another example. For example, uh, if you have extensive data checks by different people a system to increase in integrity, but at the same time, your confidentiality will suffer as more people are having a look on your data. And what about availability? That also suffers logs on your data under verification. Think of this example. So try to keep, try to understand the relationship between those objectives of CIA tribes. The weakest elements, let me see. So normally how we protect information, how we uh, protect information, of course, all of you, all of us, we know people, process and technology, people in terms of training, education, awareness, repetitions, all these, uh, these factors are concerned with the people. In terms of processes, it's about your policies, governance, I mean, reportings, this could be counted towards uh, process. And if you take technology under consideration, then of course your data centers containing firewalls, IDS, IPS, uh, different antiviruses, I mean, a strong password. So these are some of the technologies, but from this design, from this, what is the weakest link? Where we are losing? So here is a key point. Here is the key, uh, key slide of my, I mean, the weakest element in CI tried human elements. Yes, it has been decided. It has been directed. Main cause of cybersecurity breaches, human, human, I mean, like errors. This, I'm not saying it. Uh, I mean, if you take, I mean, uh, different links I have given, shared with you, full of, I mean, you know, the internet is full of this information. And let me give you an example. According to a study of IBM, Human error is the main cause of 95% of cybersecurity breaches. Check it under consideration, 95% of it. Think about it, 90 out of 20 cyber breaches may not have happened if, if I mean, like if there was some proper solution. So it means 80 to 80% 80 of cyber crimes is preventable. What we have to do in another report, let me share with you another report what is saying. The statistics tells us Tell us, I mean, 91% 90 of attacks launched with a phishing email, a single human mistake. Can you think of it? A single, it can result in an attacker, you know, taking over all your organizational infrastructure in his hand, no matter what kind of application or software or endpoint security solutions you guys are going to give. So prevention is better than cure. From this statistics, from this studies, we have to look at so after going through it, what should be our main, main target and focus? See, as I have already shared with you some, uh, you know, researches, more than 99% of the cases, I mean, humans are greatest and simplest weak point of any system. Hackers or, I mean, you know, I mean, they, they try to, uh, try to, I mean, they love to play with the social engineering type of things, you know, where they easily access some people information, they they can easily hack any system or rather than playing, dealing with technologies, uh, I mean, any other, other, I mean, there are other ways. So this is issues. So question here arise, uh, what are the main, I mean, points which we should focus on? How to develop the culture or an environment where we can try to overcome this issue. A continuous awareness activity or program, it is it can play a vital role in your achieving this. And we should, at the same time, you should uh, also realize what are the, I mean, you know, the causes, uh, I mean, like uh, for this uh, and reason for the weakest link. Some of them I have mentioned uh, in front of you, you can see on the slide, laziness, fallibility, I don't want to discuss uh, due to lack of time. So let me, do you remember before 30 to 40 years back, we uh, as a students, we used to remember the literacy rates among countries, isn't it? Then uh, uh, computer came uh, into existence and we, we start learning about computer literacy. Few years back, we had uh, digital literacy. 
and now no doubt we are living uh, you know in a digital age where we need cyber literacy that should equip our students employees with the knowledge and resources they needed so it would be not a bad time to call we are we are in the phase of cyber literacy and it can best be defined as, as knowing where to go uh, to find reliable and accurate resources on the internet and this title of course focus on helping everyone whether you are employee whether you are students to find these resources and avoid incorrect information so cyber literacy it is one of our main target okay uh, strategies if you ask me about a strategy i'm normally following the best model for me is a four phase approaches where uh, i would like for this for today's presentation i would like to focus on awareness and training and that it will lead in any organization toward education and professional development uh, due to lack of time i would like uh, to skip education and professional development for this my presentation and what is the reason this is nothing about education in terms of uh, you can train your employees on some professional certification on the associate level and that will lead them to go for a professional development to an expert level you know so uh, leave it this my main focus should be on uh, our main focus should be on awareness and training so again uh, let me check quickly the main difference between awareness and training we as administrators we as a high responsible we should understand awareness is make sure all people at all levels know what to look out for this is for everybody in your company everybody in your organization and training it makes sure people different level of it engagement have the right knowledge to execute their roles securely okay so this was the basic difference some of the bites uh, strategies that you can play it try to i mean when you are uh, focused to develop some uh, technologies in your companies try to develop it in your own way try to make it fun try to publish some do and don'ts for the employees make it relevant uh, to security try to put your staff in meetings and message put messages on the notice boards you know and try to put posters screen savers try to put some information key information on pop up messages when people log into your their computers uh, create one newsletter for your organization you know so these are some of the bites which you can implement in your i mean like you know in organization in order to spread awareness among people so they should start they should start realizing what is basic security where we are standing so the fundamental point of view there are nine topics that i think uh, in term of training people should know about it your organization staff who are end user who are facing digital devices directly or indirectly and what are those uh, nine topics phishing password security safe web browsing social engineering malware mobile security physical security removal media devices like usb working remotely so these are nine fundamental of course the, uh, they are the they can be uh, as a main topic but you know further they can be down into details of topics but at the foundational training level all your employees they are supposed to go through it there are of course uh, i have some strategies for proper training and that by the way this is a continuous process okay there is a one model uh, calling road map of a b c d e f and simple you can see assess your assets risk resources build your policy uh, by being a uh, cyber security uh, all you are our experienced guy i would like to just short it down in term of a your employees should understand what are the assets digital and physical what are the risk online what are the resources in your company you have for in term in house hired or partners vendors in the term of b build your policy if you have some issms policies or iso 27001 policies implemented in your company uh, you should uh, introduce it to your company because security begins with policy uh, I, i will give you uh, give an example of it just suppose if you remove uh, traffic signs uh, traffic signs and signals from the streets of any city what will happen where the traffic flow will go just like this try to make sure the uh, importance of this policy in term of c choose control to enforce policy what are the controls how you uh, pick it from policy and how you educate your people 
to implement it in terms of the deploy controls. I mean, the controls you have created and make sure it's working. Try to check it technically. Does it work with your work? And can employer are using it, can work with it. In terms of E, that is educate everyone. It goes towards awareness. I mean, everyone should needs to know what are the security policies, how to comply with them. And uh, finally, as you have, as I told you, this is a process, not a project. You have to keep it in continuous format and then go for audit then again go for test lay out a plan to assess security on you know a periodic basis stay up to date on emerging threats like this so these are a quick model you can see we should focus over it please keep in mind this this is a never ending process this roadmap should be continuing if if you if you are a company your organization facing cyber threats in term of uh, some extra efforts I can put it, but unfortunately, you know, as time does not allow me to go through it, I would like to end my presentation with the last words. Effectively transform your organization cybersecurity culture, continuously deliver, brief mention awareness by it, ensure they are engaging effortless and efficiently seamlessly embedded, training into employees daily routine. It should be their daily routine. And how to deliver it, a continuous process I told you ongoing employees on cybersecurity education. It should never be stopped. Real-time feedback, you should be available to give real-time feedback to your employees concerning I mean, you know, cyber threats. Of course, we have to move towards cultural change and hands-on learning approach. These are some of the key points which uh, will focus. Remember that cybersecurity is a shared responsibility at home, at school, at work, in our community, communities, and we are responsible for it. Humans, we as a humans, don't have to be the weakest link. Thanks for listening. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Salim. Uh, I think, um, thanks to you, and now I know the ABCDF uh, training strategy. So uh, yeah. even if we have our experience in uh, cyber security, we never finish to, to learn. So thank you so much. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much. So now, uh, so I would like to say thank you for all uh, the complete panel and the panelists, uh, Mr. Gong Sokli, uh, Mr. Ioan Mitulescu, and uh, of course, again, Mr. Yu, uh, Yu, uh, Dr. Salim Ahmed. Do you have uh, one last word, uh, Gong Sok, Mr. Lee or Mr. Mitulescu? Well, it's a really uh, nice experience with you. So I'm really uh, happy to yeah, we're this in a session. Thank you. Invite me, you know, Julia. You, you, you will be welcome. Uh, same for me. Thank you so much uh, for uh, inviting me, and uh, I'm very happy that I uh, participate in this. And uh, what my colleague said, uh, it's it's really, really, really uh, uh, useful. It's what it is today. And uh, yes, Dr. Salim and and put it properly clearly out there it's an ongoing process and yes we humans are the ones that actually are uh, you know the ones that we should be responsible not the systems <laughs> uh, so we have to work there yeah. so we are here yeah, as a human yeah. and yeah dr salim thank you uh, mr julian first of all thank you so much uh, uh, for providing us such a I mean, like a um, brilliant platform where we can share, we can discuss, we can learn from each other. I mean, I myself, uh, I, I have all, all, always counting myself as a student. I'm still learning, I'm still studying, I'm still teaching. So uh, thank you so much, Mr. Metalosco and Mr. Lee. Um, I really enjoyed, I mean, uh, talking with you. And if you need anything from the state of the Qatar, most welcome, you can approach me by Mr. Julian, anytime. Thank you so much for very, very kind proposition. Uh, again, thank you all. So, in closing, I sincerely wish you all, or to the audience also, all to take the knowledge and information learned from this Congress to your own organizations in order to ensure and provide a more secure and overall safer information society for all. I would be happy also to keep in touch uh, with you at Ralph Kuros Company and participate to our future bootcamp at our Purple Academy. 
Don't forget to fill our satisfaction survey because we would like to organize next year such an event. So we need this feedback to, to, uh, to be able to continue. And I would like to say, see you at FICA 2022. Have a nice day. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a nice day. I'm Samida. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Samida. <laughs> All the best. All the best. Yeah. Thank you.